Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. By now, you may have heard that Adobe will be ending its support for the venerable Flash Player in 2020. That's only two years left for the platform that ran the majority of the interactive web games and animations that I used to waste my time playing way back in high school. But what's wrong with Flash? Is it simply being cast away for something newer and flashier? Or is there a good reason to get rid of it? To answer this question, we need to start at the beginning with why Flash became as popular as it did in the first place. You see, way back in the 1990s when the height of cool on the internet was having your own GeoCities page, there weren't a ton of options for interactivity or even just animation aside from GIFs. Yes, GIFs. That is, until 1996 when Netscape started offering a piece of software called Future Splash Viewer for its web browser. Future Splash, surprisingly, was not a chill wave band, but rather a software solution for graphic designers that supported animations and vector images. We take these things for granted today, but at the time it was so innovative that Microsoft decided to use Future Splash on the MSN homepage to help it stand out from its web portal competitors. That gave the platform a ton of exposure in a short amount of time. Once that happened, a company called Macromedia, which would later be purchased by Adobe, bought Future Splash and renamed it Flash. And this was before the year was even over. As time went on, so did Flash development, and it gained the ability to code many different kinds of interactive experiences, paving the way for sites like the infamous Newgrounds.com and other massive repositories of online games. Then, in 2004, it got video support. Fun fact, YouTube even used to use Flash for many years to power its entire library of content. But just because something is super widespread and popular doesn't mean it's perfect. And Flash had plenty of warts, many of which started to come to light in 2007 with the release of the first iPhone. Even though Flash was a major component of many websites at the time, iOS did not support Flash. This led to a ton of frustration for many users, but Apple stood by its decision, pointing out that Flash was proprietary and resource heavy, in large part thanks to its dependence on inefficient software video decoding. And that latter point was particularly problematic for the battery-powered mobile revolution that Apple was in the process of unleashing. And in retrospect, Apple's timing was actually pretty good. See, in the late 2000s, open standards that provided some of the same visual and interactive functionality as Flash were really starting to take off. And aside from using efficient hardware video decoding that Apple claimed could double screen time while watching videos, they were free. They were free. And if all those reasons still weren't enough for you, Flash has also been a favorite target of attackers and black hats for much of its existence. Not only that, but Adobe has come under heavy criticism for not doing enough to patch these holes. In fact, Adobe released a public apology at one point for taking over 16 months to fix one particular issue. So nothing happens overnight. It wasn't until 2015 that YouTube finally transitioned away from Flash in favor of HTML5. But this trifecta of major shortcomings, along with enormous improvements in open standards, have continually eroded Flash's market share in the high quality video and interactive web arenas. Arenas that used to be nearly its domain exclusively. But with all that said, when support for Flash ends in 2020, it won't disappear completely because there will always be ancient websites that will simply never be updated. And believe it or not, offline, Flash is still widely used in the animation industry, even for current TV shows. So even though Flash will be disappearing from your online life, it clearly wasn't just a <laughs> flash in the pan. <laughs> Who writes this stuff? And you know what else isn't a flash in the pan? Private internet access VPN. Not only does PIA work on up to five devices at once by hiding your true IP address and allowing you to bypass geo restrictions and censorship by making you appear that you're connecting from somewhere else, it also blocks unwanted connections to help prevent attacks, auto blocks all traffic if the VPN disconnects, keeps your data out of the hands of advertisers and other snoops who are tracking your activity, prevents DNS leaks, and even includes MACE, PIA's built-in malware blocker. PIA supports multiple VPN protocols and encryption levels, allowing you to dial in the exact level of protection that you need. They have apps for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Linux, and a Chrome extension for God's sake with support for more platforms. 
Yes, even more platforms coming soon. And PIA has over 3,000 servers in 28 countries and does not log user activity. So what are you waiting for? Check them out today at the link below. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure to put a comment down below to tell us what kind of topics in the future you'd like us to cover. Like the video, subscribe of course, and we will see you next time.